Thank you so much for inviting me to speak today. I'm a glaucoma specialist at Mass Eye and Ear. Every day I see patients that have lost significant amount of vision or are nearly blind from glaucoma. And I can't help but wonder, why are people blind from glaucoma in 2019? How can we find these people earlier? How can we bring them into care earlier to prevent unnecessary blindness? Glaucoma is a disease of the optic nerve. It's associated with a progressive visual field loss and is a major cause of irreversible blindness worldwide. It has an estimated global prevalence of 3.5% in those over the age of 40. It's estimated to affect 76 million people worldwide, 11 million of which are bilaterally blind. Because of the slow progressive loss of vision in glaucoma, it often does not come into attention until significant vision loss has occurred and is commonly referred to as the silent thief of sight. In fact, population-based studies have shown us that over 50% of glaucoma in the United States goes undiagnosed, and many individuals have significant amount of vision loss at the time of diagnosis. In fact, glaucoma is an ideal disease to screen for because early treatment with reduction of intraocular pressure will delay progression. In addition, because of the silent nature of the disease, the only way to really find it is to screen for it. Because there are no reliable risk groups other than age, to screen for glaucoma, you essentially need to screen everyone over the age of 40. So for community screening to be successful, it needs to reach a large number of people, and it must be simple, and it must be scalable. Current screening strategies rely on community outreach program, telemedicine programs that rely on expert clinician opinion and are expensive and labor intensive. In fact, the US Preventative Services Task Force in 2014 recommended against glaucoma screening because the cost was simply too high. So it's clear that we need an efficient and effective screening tool with an easily obtainable testing, like a fundus photograph, an automated classification of those photographs, such as that can be done with deep learning methods, to be able to uh, perform large-scale screening programs. In fact, deep learning has already been used for glaucoma detection using fundus photographs, but these studies have relied on subjective grading of disc photos. Though these algorithms that have been developed have good classification, they rely on subjective labeling of the fundus photographs, and this is problematic. This method of case labeling um, has poor performance in diagnosing early glaucoma, and it has a large inter-reader interpretation variation with frequent overestimation and underestimation of disease. In fact, in one study, it took up to nine different ophthalmologists to reach three consistent grading. Ultimately, any algorithm that we devise uh, cannot do better than what it uses to learn. So it can't do better than its reference standard or the ground truth. So can we improve our reference standard? What if we could use objective data in addition to the subjective clinical opinion to come up with a better reference standard? There is considerable evidence for the genetic risk of glaucoma. In a recent study, 112 genetic loci were identified that together explained over 75% of disease process. In addition, intraocular pressure, as I already mentioned, is the major risk factor for glaucoma with about 16% increase in risk for every one millimeter of mercury increase in pressure. Additionally, it's the only modifiable risk factor with about 50% reduction rate of progression when you reduce the pressure by about 25%. So most current deep learning applications, at least in ophthalmology, replicate human tasks. They, for example, classify photographs as diabetic retinopathy or no diabetic retinopathy. But the most exciting part of artificial intelligence is not to replicate human tasks, but is to extend human knowledge. And you may think it's not possible to predict genetic risk from a simple fundus photograph, but these algorithms have shown us exciting results. 
So for example, the Google algorithms shown here are able to look at a simple fundus photograph and predict age, gender, and refractive error with very good accuracy, information that's invisible to the expert human eye, including myself. So it may be possible to find new information using these algorithms. You can then back engineer these algorithms to find out what the machine was paying attention to when it determined its outcome. So the goal of what we're proposing here is twofold. The first goal is to detect individuals that have high intraocular pressure and high genetic risk based on their fundus photograph features and therefore who are at high risk of glaucoma. And secondly, to identify unique imaging features that are associated with high genetic risk and high intraocular pressure that may be targets for future research and targets for screening purposes. We'll be using the data from the UK Biobank that is existing, um, includes half a million UK individuals with genetic information and 170,000 fundus photographs. We will develop a deep learning algorithm that will predict our labels, in this case, genetic risk and intraocular pressure. We will divide intraocular pressure into quintiles based on the population distribution curve and the genetics data will be analyzed for known mutations and GWAS identified SNPs. They will be weighed based on their reported effects and uh, normalized to account for the allele frequency in the population and similarly divided into quintiles to come up with a polygenic risk score. We will then determine, um, we will then create two-dimensional attention maps that will help us identify which imaging features were most predictive of the outcome. So this work will help refine identifiable glaucoma risk from fundus imaging features. Ultimately, because glaucoma is a complex disease, we predict that no single method will be able to accurately identify early disease. And so we will then propose to create multimodal disease risk models that includes the risk identified from fundus photographs, genetic risk, and intraocular pressure risk, to name a few, to improve our prediction for early disease than any single approach would. We will then test the performance of this algorithm using an independent, high-quality data set that we already have access to that will uh, basically test differentiating clinically confirmed glaucoma cases from normal controls. And so the goal is to ultimately partner with industry to develop and commercialize a deep learning-based screening tool for glaucoma. And to do this, we'll develop the algorithm, but we would also have to undergo prototype development and prospective data collection for FDA approval. The market for such a device is actually very large. As I already mentioned, you would need to screen pretty much everyone over the age of 40, and that's over 120 million individuals in the US alone. You think that's a lot of people to screen, but there is a lot of cost savings to be had. The annual burden of glaucoma treatment is estimated at $5.8 billion. Added to that is the annual burden of loss of productivity due to vision loss, which is about $2.9 billion. If we can detect individuals earlier, bring them into care earlier, and prevent vision loss, we will ultimately reduce cost, reduce the burden of blindness, and prevent unnecessary blindness. Thank you.